Hey folks, so I believe this is the fourth and last uh, set of slides on intelligence. Uh, next time it's going to be personality and that'll be the end of it. I'm still rendering uh, the third chunk on my other computer and so uh, this this one might have slightly worse video quality. Um, I'll test it out and hope for the best. Uh, we will we will see. Um, but I appreciate y'all bearing with me. Uh, and so let's just kind of plow ahead and, um, see. Cool. So we are just going to dive right in. Uh, I checked, uh, to make sure the recording sounded at least not awful this time. Um, so hopefully this doesn't sound like video one, um, because I use this, this computer for that. I don't think it will. But, um, whoop, excuse me, Tooks. But we will do our best. And I apologize for all the mic feedback that you must be getting right now. <laughs> yeah, hi. You, you know that you're in the way. Oh, it's a good thing he's cute. Anyway, I, I, I apologize. Uh, it's it's easier just to let him win sometimes. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna work around him and hope you guys can at least enjoy the the weirdness. So yeah, interpreting the waste. So here's here's what a as close to a reproduction as I can get um, with the waste, the Wexler Adult Intelligence Scales, um, and it breaks down so. It gives you all the different subtest scores. So here we have uh, vocab. This person um, is scoring above, well, a standard deviation above on vocab and comprehension, and about, and a uh, two thirds of a standard deviation above on uh, digits, span, arithmetic, and similarity. There, they seem to be. Uh, struggling a bit on processing speed, as you can kind of see. Now you can kind of cheat and look down uh, at their total score for their pr the processing speed index, and you'll see that's at 100 or slightly below 100. Um, and but but the but the the basic idea still is um, to kind of give you a more holistic. They try and give you as much information as possible. Tuki, can I help you? Um, ah, it's a good thing he's cute. Um, they try and give you as much information as possible so you can kind of have a more holistic view so you never just get the full scale IQ. Where you, you would never just get, oh, they have an IQ of 111, which is a smidge under standard deviation above the mean. So they're still, they're above average, um, like high average and you can see that there's some var variability here they seem to do better at the perceptual organization index um that that's higher than all those other pieces uh where they're struggling is processing speed and you can see that but still they're not like drastically struggling and uh, for clarification this is not mine um although they do have a bit of a similar profile um, their matrix reasoning spot on. Um, yeah, I thought it would be weird to include my own. But anyway, I, I might do that later in the for later versions of this test or for the class, not this you guys. Um, but fun facts, mine is way more lopsided. Usually, uh, because most of these scores are tapping a general ability of, um, like general ability G, um, they're all pretty comparable. A lot of these are highly correlated as they should because they're all trying to tap that same overarching construct. Um, Tuki, you're the worst. But uh, there are exceptions. One reason why I 
been I got interested in this is because of my own kind of lopsided. I mean, lopsided is not the right word because um, they're still all good. Just some are way better than others, and it, that's not typical. But then again, usually it's the quirks in our lives that get us interested in those things. Anyway, I'm going to try and keep going through this and maybe annoy Tuki enough that he will leave. I don't think that's happening. So, and I'm going to leave this in. My hope is you'll at least be entertained. All right. So here's kind of the basic flow uh, to do this um, formally. And so you start with just interpreting the full ice uh, scale score. So you go from the broad to the specific. I, um, and so you interpret then the verbal and processing IQ and note any discrepancies between them. Then you interpret the index scores. And then you interpret the subscale scores and note any discrepancies, and including like analysis of patterns of way scores. Um, so, but when you look, the reason why we we tend to go from the broadest to the most specific is uh, in terms of reliability. Uh, the full scale um, is the most reliable, and it kind of goes down from there. Um, so these discrepancies are kind of like at the individual subscales, which is where I started because I personally find those more interesting. But then again, I am not someone who administers these tests because I, I, I kind of work with the outcome, like the, the raw data that these tests produce. And so patterns of these score, like looking at general patterns tends to not be reliable diagnostic however they are helpful for individual cases to kind of identify potential discrepancies and use those to kind of test hypotheses and identify um, possible inter interventions or ident like it's an effective anecdotally it's fairly effective but that doesn't seem to hold true like as a universal if that makes sense. So there doesn't seem to be some any magic like combination to like if you have this much of a discrepancy at the individual subtests, then you have this disorder. But like discrepancies can give you a hint and interpreting those is important because of that. They can kind of guide you. All right. And so if we were to go through this process, Kind of formally, we would start with a full scale IQ, which I still am not confident in my ability to like circle them and if that circling shows up. So maybe, anyway, the full scale IQ, you start there and then, and you see it's, it's 111. Typically you're given some percentiles to give you some context. I did not put those in here because of reasons that made sense at the time. Um, and then you can see looking at the performance IQ and verbal IQ, those are very similar. And then you move down to the verbal and the various um, indices. And that's where you see that higher perceptual organizational index versus processing speed index. And then you can kind of like move up. Personally, if I were to remake these slides, I, I would um, kind of replicate that flow by moving the kind of the full scale to the subscale, but this is how it looks. This is what you gotta do. Um, but yeah, and so you can see that the processing speed is a little lower, and, but it's, and it seems to balance out the perceptual organization. Boom. Now the psychometrics of the waste. So is super reliable, which I think is great. So if you look at the split half coefficient, so if you just slice that test in half, uh, without the speed of tasks, because um, that kind of brings them down. Uh, full scale IQ is uh, has a reliability split half of 0.98, uh, verbal 0.97, and performance 0.95. And so you can see that that is the basic reasoning for why they have the flow as they do. The broadest score is the most reliable, or at least 
um, and test retest similarly 0.95 uh, for the full scale and each of the subscales is a little lower the performance iq is lower and that's because it is influenced by the environment more so than verbal and uh, so if you are in the same circumstances the performance iq reliability tends to be higher but on average with enough differences in circumstances it it's still very reliable much more so than many of the like personality tests that you know you see even though like official ones like the big five etc it's still really reliable compared to even that where it has like an obvious like external influence but these tests are kind of designed that way they're designed to be as reliable as possible and that's why they are expensive and there's so much training but the trade-off is you get really nice reliability now uh, you may remember that standard error measurement like way back when in the pre-corona days and um just to remind you, standard error measurement is uh, standard deviation times uh, the square root of one minus the reliability. And so uh, as such, like we can basically describe the standard error. So like 95% of your expected scores are gonna be like plus or minus two times your standard error of measurement. 99% of the time your scores gonna be in between three standard deviations of the standard error of measurement and so that's how you can get per, like individual confidence intervals uh, and so with the reliability as high as it is which is awesome um you can really see some um you can see that the confidence intervals are fairly tight and hopefully uh you'll have to and uh, forgive my pandemic brain i'm gonna see if on the next slide i actually have shown an example i did oh this is wonderful um okay so say you have the uh someone gets a measure of the waist with a full scale iq of um 108 we can then kind of plug in those numbers we know that there's standard deviation of 15 we also know the reliability and so uh, 1 minus 0 0.02 or 1 minus 0.98 gives us 0 0.02. So if we magic all that math all that together, we get a standard error of measurement of two and a smidge. And then we can find out what the kind of confidence interval is by multiplying so that two times standard error of measurement is that what we add plus or minus to our score to get those 95% confidence intervals so 108 plus or minus plus or minus okay i flipped i flipped a number here i apologize so it's plus or minus a 4.24 i i've clearly flipped them <sighs> mason okay so plus or minus um four so add two to both of these or add two to the top one so like 12 or 112 to 103. It's a pretty tight confidence interval. All right, so these are a little wider than what I've shown here. Um, but they're still fairly tight compared to what we typically see for standard for confidence intervals, and that's because the reliability is so high. So the subtest reliabilities tend to be too low not too low to be psychometrically so when i wrote this like i over i feel like i oversold this there you can have reliabilities this low they're not great um but they're they're less great compared to the measures of intelligence and in those raw scores where we've been spoiled with those reliabilities of 0.98 and so when you have the subscales or have reliabilities of 0 0.7, 0 0.8, a few in the 0.6s, uh, those tend to be the performance subscales. Um, Tuki is snoring. Hopefully you cannot hear it through the headset. I apologize if you can. Um, but because these uh, reliabilities are lower, there's a lot more bouncing around. Uh, 
So they bounce more so than the scores on the scales in the index, and that makes sense. They're smaller scales. They're more, like, when you aggregate, you cancel out more of that, that error. That's why we have longer tests. And, um, again, I feel like I overstated this when I wrote this, um, that the profile analysis is impossible. It's hard. It's like I encourage you not to overinterpret. It's not impossible, but I definitely don't recommend like making strong, like really strong causal claims. Um, but at least it gives you a place to look. So um, how we assess validity. So these are generally assessed with correlations with like the older test scores and for for a small group of subjects with like the WISC, so like the kids version. And that's how we get these basic validity coefficients. Uh, these range from 0.5 to 0.9 on the subtest. So like verbal IQ, uh, the correlation between like the waste three and the waste two revised is 0.94. Um, its correlation with the WISC is 0.88. Performance is lower. Again, not shocking. Um, 0.68 and 0.78 versus the full scale IQ, 0 0.93, 0 0.88. They're, these are good. These are way better than what we typically see. And there are some cool examples out there of like taking the Army Alpha like 30, 60 years later. It has a really good validity coefficient. Again, I encourage you to check it out. Um, and just kind of poke around out there. There's some really cool stuff. But I'm trying to be mindful and get as much content out as I can as quickly as possible because the bottleneck is computer rendering. So yeah, got one more slide to go and then we're done with intelligence. So when you evaluate the ways, you really should, um, like there's some key things to be mindful of here. So, and the type is, the there's there are multiple subscales or multiple aspects of intelligence, not the kind of that Martin or that Howard Gardner talks about with multiple intelligences. That that's not a thing. Um, also, don't 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 mix up Howard Gardner and Martin Gardner. Martin Gardner's that cool uh, kind of mathematician puzzly dude. Uh, he's wonderful. Howard Gardner, I have mm, less positive. Um, opinions. Uh, but in general, um, the IQ score and the index score are really reliable um, and really valid. Although, like, be cautious with interpreting those subtests. They're more vulnerable to, especially the performance based ones, to like outside influence. Um, but in general, there's a really strong correlation between the waste and revised and um, Ways three. Now there's a mixed blessing there because um, it um, it it means that like there's not been a lot of change, which is good because the construct of intelligence isn't really changing. Um, but at the same time, that means it's there's really a lot of stability. Um, but yeah, so, okay, I'm going to cut this off here. I'm going to jump into the personality ones as soon as I have a computer free to render. Uh, we will see how long that takes. Uh, yeah, we're, we're in the home stretch. Uh, thanks for bearing with me. Um, I'll talk, I'll talk at you all real soon. <music>